Happy Monday, everybody. Yo, hey friends. We're, we're we're back here again. The normal cast and crew is is ready to 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 tune it up one more time on a Monday. That's right. It's just the usual two of us here. Yep. You know. They it's... say they say two's two's a party. Uh, and the weird thing is podcast is a crowd. Three's illegal. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got, uh, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be playing hurt for the, uh, uh, first portion of our, of our podcast. And then, uh, we will be joined hopefully by Andrew Main. Uh, Brian is on, on, on the DL today with a non COVID illness. Oh, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, because... it's an illness. But you know, when you say, "Oh, I'm so sick, I can't do a thing," that's the first thing anyone's gonna think, right? Right, because there there had been some travel recently. There had been, yeah, yeah. Um, but I definitely was sent a picture of four COVID tests on top of one another, <laughs> all showing a negative stripe. So we're we're uh, within our scientific ability to determine such. Uh, uh, I think he just got <laughs> he just got himself a little bit of a bug. Well, you know, it takes a couple of days to germinate. You know, I don't know about that. That's that's the weird. I would almost think that he might have gotten it here. Oh, really? In Austin? Not, yeah. Not in Las Vegas. I mean, if he got yeah. it, like normally with non COVID is special because it has that like five day asymptomatic period, right? That's like that's like part of what makes it the disease that shut down the world. <laughs> Uh, uh, normally the common cold or flu doesn't, so you never know. Yeah. All right. I gotta, I've gotta produce the show. Keep producing. Okay. Anyway, guys, uh, uh, welcome. Hello. We are, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have a, we're going to have a good time. Uh, right. it's going to be weird. There, there will be things and, uh, and yeah. Yeah, in fact, I can I can in fact confirm there will be both weird and things. All right, we're now we're just fucking, now we're just fucking. Sorry. No, we've got we've got. Now good. we're just now we're just paddling. We're just trying to stay afloat. <laughs> our heads are barely staying above the wave line, and, and we're doing our best to keep up. But no, 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 come on. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's just get started. Let's, I mean, we're not waiting for anybody, right? Uh, right. Oh, no, I'm waiting for you. I'm you're, stalling. I'm stalling yeah, for you're, you. You're stalling one you're more minute for me. Yeah. Gotta, okay. Okay. I, I do got to cook a uh, little bit. Of I um. I went to uh uh. I got a love hate relationship with sake. Oh really? The uh, rice wine. Yeah. So there's a place that we like uh, that uh, uh called Lil Nona's that is vegan pizza. It's very very good. It's mm. in South Austin. And it's right next to a place called um, Big Nona's. No, called Texas Saki Company. Okay. Uh, and like Kampai, y'all. I I think that I I kind of enjoy whenever I've ordered sake, I tend to enjoy it, right? Mm. But it's normally hibachi. It's normally sushi. It's normally like in situations where I wanted. Just as like I'm just sitting here crushing sake after sake and we're just like having a good time hanging out i don't know it it it, it didn't really hit uh uh it, it, i felt uncomfortable i don't know how much sake takes it takes for me to get super trashed because like even if i'm drinking it at a uh, uh, hibachi or something like that mm -hmm. like i'm probably i probably i probably got a got a sapporo sidecar anyway so i don't know but these, this place, I really liked it. It is good. If you if you like sake, then then go get it. Uh, they got some sparkling sake. 
Like everyone's got their Sparkling own. Sparkling sake. Every, everyone's got their own goofy. entry into the like bubbly alcohol. Bubbly alcohol right. is is threatening like the Delta to become the dominant <laughs> strain of alcohol in America. Yeah. That'll be this will this will be like the big turning point, like yeah. before seltzer and after seltzer. Have you seen that Bud Light is already regretting calling their seltzer Bud Light Seltzer? The the commercial where they like covering up Bud. They're Light. They're like, we fucked up. Well, like we like, screwed up on that one. Yeah, we a big boner by us because uh, we shouldn't have called it. We should have called it literally anything else. <laughs> and with the reach and distribution of Bud Light, it right. probably would have been pretty good. Bud Seltzer, even Bud Seltzer, just that would have been. Yeah. Or be or or, oh, or yeah. you know something. Be like drinking. That. Be drinking. Stay. St- be drinking. <laughs> be drinking. <laughs> I would love. I would go and get a. Be six- drinking responsibly. If I showed up to a party and I had a twelver of be drinking, <laughs> like I feel like people would be like, "All right, we be drinking. Started. We be drinking. We be drinking. We be drinking." Oh damn! I feel like we got it. All right, we got it. All right, you want to you want to do the thing? Yeah. All right, here we go. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, as always, joined, as always, with Justin Robert Young. Hello. And uh, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it we got for right now. Uh, yeah, we're we're going we're gonna to have Andrew coming off the top rope, hopefully a little bit later. But otherwise, hmm. it's just going to be the, 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 the power, the core of the Weird <laughs> Things Podcast. The neutron. Yes. Nu- the no, center. The nucleus. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Uh, well, uh, uh, welcome back, Justin. Yeah. I've, I've got a question for you. Go ahead. Do you know the world's longest cave do you know the longest cave in the world the world's longest cave yeah, no i wouldn't trivia. i wouldn't think to know it offhand uh, I, I guess i also really just don't have a tremendous sense of <laughs> caves in general <laughs> I, 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 never... I thought this would be like one of those general trivia things where if you were if you were one of those kids who read like the guinness yeah. world records book during lunch you might know yeah but i guess i offhand. also i also tend to feel like um like i guess I've, I've i've lived my entire life believing that any cave i walk into could possibly <laughs> go to the core of the earth mm, like like mm. that that you never really know where a cave you ends. just take one wrong turn and you can start to see the orange let, glow let, let, me, let me just put it this way mm-hmm. if you told me that the longest cave in the world is in Budapest, <laughs> Shanghai, uh, some random city in India, or like Metuchen, New Jersey, I would be equally as impressed and surprised. Like, like I have mm-hmm. no clue where the longest cave is. And also, do we know for sure? Has somebody investigated every cave? Well, that's a that's a great point that you bring up, Justin. Okay. Because because. Four days ago, you would have said, oh, my gosh, of course, I know that Mammoth Cave National Park is the longest cave. Where's that? Cave. It's in Kentucky. Metuchen? Oh. It's in Kentucky. Hey, oh, my God. I wouldn't have, I would have no idea. <laughs> Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. You would have said that because it was about 412 miles long, the, the, the longest uh, cave. That is no longer the case, J-Man. Wow. So it lost the it lost the strap. It lost the title. It lost it, it did in fact lose the strap because the longest uh measured cave is now Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky at 420 miles. They went and found eight more miles of that bad boy. And uh, uh and so it is now longer. Wow! So extending the lead, it didn't lose the strap. It it, it defended that. That's an that's an and still. That's uh, right. Not not an and new. So explorers at eight miles to the world's longest known cave system. So here's the only long cave walk that I've been on was actually out here in in Austin. Uh, you can actually follow along with Brian and I in VR. Uh, that was part of our uh, uh thing that we did Rad for Toyota. Stuff, yeah, but. Uh, even then you walked through that and there were portions in which you could see it went deeper and, and the people were like, no, no, no. Like that's, you know, uh, uh, yet to be fully explored. So that, again, that, that, that that, that goes to my point that I am, you could tell me any cave goes (laughs) everywhere. Like like if you, Mm -hmm. if somebody came up to me and they, had written for the Atlantic and they were wearing glasses and they said, 
uh, uh, well, of course, you know that there is a cave that goes from uh, uh, Secaucus to London. Of course. Like, I would be like, all right. I, 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 I believe guess you. that's real. Oh. And it's like, well, we can't go there because of the mole people. And I, then I would start to begin, oh, uh, what's up with you? You might be, you might be like, funny. I don't, most of the mole people that I've met have been very nice. <laughs> um. exactly. They're very <laughs> hospitable. They're very inviting. They're very they they, they want to they want to show you their culture. Um, apparently, over the years, Mammoth Cave has been found to connect to other smaller caves, including Proctor Cave, Ro uh, Rappel Cave, and Morrison Cave. I feel like bootleggers knew all of this. All we mm -hmm. needed to do is find the right <laughs> moonshiners, uh, a diary. Or you know something like that, and, and we would we would have this entire cave thing all all carved out immediately. Mm. I love I I love that they, I, I love that they are slowly realizing that all of these little caves are all just part of the same system too, right? Yeah, we, it's a very like human centric problem, right? We have we found all these holes in the ground, and it doesn't seem like they connect to each other until they all do, and they're all the same thing. Uh, yeah, no, totally. I, I, I think that it's always been a fascination for me, our conception of reality, mm. because it simultaneously, we have no choice but to understand it as firm, right? But it is far more malleable than we, than we think. And, and, and stuff comes like with, with stuff like that, where, you're like, oh, okay, well, I know that there are eight cave systems. And it's like, or no, there's one. We just haven't found the, the connecting thing. Or at some point, the cave eroded or, or something happened where there's like, you know, it, it comes to the idea of like, okay, well, what is, what is knowable? What isn't knowable? I always say this about like news, that news kind of comes and goes and we, and we keep finding different ways to quantify it that, you know, I'm I'm waiting. The example I always give is I'm always waiting for at one moment someone's gonna be like, "Oh, uh, new DNA records. Abe Lincoln was Asian. Chinese guy. <laughs> Chinese guy. Abe Lincoln." And 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 mm -hmm. everybody will be like, "No, uh, well, all uh, right, goddamn, uh, look at that. Look at the DNA. <laughs> that man was Asian." Huh. Mm -mm. Uh, we got another story here. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna play. This is a little game. A little, it's a little game. A fun game. It's kind of a okay. fun game, like we would play on Great Night. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a headline for you. I'm going to blank out a few words. Yep. Blank, blank, kills 63 endangered penguins in fluke occurrence. Blank, blank, kills 63 endangered penguins in fluke occurrence. 63 endangered penguins. 63. So that's a lot, right? I wouldn't imagine that you're going to find 63 endangered penguins in some kind of conservatory or zoo. Mm. So I'm guessing that that means that it's kind of out in the wild. I would say that that's correct. All right. That's correct to a degree, yeah. Okay. So then it would say, it's something that somebody brings to the penguins. Maybe they're trying to observe the penguins. They're trying to study the penguins. But this is death. Right. Blank. This is an injury. No, not injury. Blank, blank, kills 63 endangered penguins in fluke occurrence. I don't know if this is for real, but I'm, I'm going to go with JDS3K here in the chat, and I'm just going to say gender reveal. <laughs> like, somebody needed to do the gender reveal right by the penguins because it's their favorite animal, and next thing you know, 63 of them some bitches are laying dead. That's that's very funny. That that's that's funnier than the reality. <laughs> what it is. Uh no, a um so in South Africa where they have those those penguins, uh, uh a bee swarm, honeybees, oh! uh seem to be the perpetrators behind uh, uh over five dozen uh penguin penguin deaths. Uh, uh they had found the penguins, uh the, the their bodies with bee stings on them as well as dead bees in the area. That's a real, like, undercard for, like, tiger versus shark, right? <laughs> like, if we're talking about, like, two things that you wouldn't normally see together, but you'd be curious to see who wins, like, uh, uh, how in the hot ham water did... So this is naturally where penguins are, and we, we're looking right now at a map, and it's down in the southern coast of South Africa. 
Right. They have they have a a, a I, I don't know enough about it, but they have a species of penguin that hang out there. Um, I'm I'm assuming because of its um, uh, because of its beeline distance from the South Pole, possibly. But they do have. I mean, they I have mean, little penguin it, friends. T- t- terminology, considering the news story. R- uh, wait. A, a oh, ooh, well, okay. I mean, come on, mm. just have some respect. As the penguin yeah. flies, well. <laughs> Um, so that's um, the the African penguin is the species. Uh, right now, there's only about forty one thousand seven hundred individual um, birds, and uh, their population is decreasing by uh, by a good bit, eighty percent in the past fifty years. So, uh, um, okay, so so we have no idea what migratory pattern or or uh, situation just uh. uh pushed all these bees down there but these are not normally animals and insects that come into in, into conflict is my guess and and the penguins freaked out the bees freaked out next thing you know a bunch of people were dead yeah uh one of uh one of the veterinarians uh involved in investigating this says this is a very rare occurrence we do not expect it to happen often it is a fluke um the penguins must not die just like that, as they are already in danger of extinction. They are a protected species. Well, yeah, dog. They shouldn't. They shouldn't die in any. So wait a minute. So were people looking after them, or they? Um, who's in charge of these? I don't penguins, know. Is yeah, what who, my question is: <laughs> Who's their wrangler? Who's the? Yeah, like I mean, because these what, are man. like like the, these penguins. They migrate like in it's a city. It's like city urban areas. Yeah. It's it's not like they're uh Cause if you see a swarm of bees coming off the coast, homie, you better get on a ski do with a raid can and start spraying. <laughs> like right. like you need to take these hoes down. <laughs> hey, speaking of um uh, taking these hoes down. Yeah. Um it looks like some somebody just tried to take Jupiter down. Uh look at this gif here. Do you see that? What? What are you what are, what are you seeing here on this on this gif? Okay. Well, on the gif, it is Jupiter. It's a very like a, a murky picture of Jupiter and then what looks like and and according to the headline here, something large just smashed into Jupiter is I mean what I what I would imagine considering Jupiter's size would be like the entire continent of North America exploding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we see like a like a metallic shine almost, like a like a team rocket ding yeah. sort of lens flare effect. Um yeah. So some- I also think that that has, you know, just as as equally a chance to just be some kind of artifact in whatever viewing device. Uh, apparently this was uh, noted by multiple amateur astronomers, uh, Harold Pileski and Jose Luis Pereira uh, from from Brazil, Simone Galilee from Italy, Jean Paul. A lot of people saw this. So, And they all identified with their own equipment that there was a big flash on Jupiter. That there was some sort of flash or impact on Jupiter, yeah. How much bigger is Jupiter than Earth? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, because and because we we know it too. Well, yeah, yeah. Thing. Sorry, that was uh, a great, that was a great thing where I asked you to do something <laughs> to cover for me sneezing, and then uh, uh, it just led to dead silence. But and so it's about eleven times wider than Earth. Eleven times wider uh, than than Earth. So pretty pretty big. Even so, a, I mean, I guess if you were to guess. Mm. What it would take to cause that kind of pop from as far away as Jupiter is to us, like visible right on Earth, like what would that be? Because then we can exit by eleven. <laughs> uh-huh. I would probably think my guess would be something like the size of of the state of Georgia or or. So if all of Georgia exploded right. at the exact same time. Smashed, collided into the planet. Just yeah. boom, explosion of a uh, uh, pork-based barbecue and mm-hmm. uh, and it would be Chipper Jones memorabilia. And uh, that's at least my guess, based on just how big that the you know the dot that we see on that video yeah. is. So, 
So you would say 11 Georgias. <laughs> can you look up the square footage of Georgia? We need to see the square footage of Georgia so we can get a sense. And then we'll see whether or not we could put that into a bigger box. Like, would it be all of the United States? Would sure. It be Russia? It looks like uh, 59,425 square miles. Okay. Now let's look up countries that are 59,000 square miles. And here we go. We are going to let the definitive answer be known of what would need to explode that would create the exact same big flash that happened on the uh, uh, on, on the surface of Jupiter over the last week. Okay. It would have to be pretty small here. All right. It's looking like Bangladesh would be the biggest without going over. Oh, North Korea. Uh, yeah, North Korea, 93, Nicaragua, Greece. If we're if we're going to rank by most likely. <laughs> most likely to just spontaneously explode. To spontaneously explode, and we have no idea. And next thing you know, we're getting uh, reports from Jupiter saying, damn, something big just exploded on Earth. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm hoping it's North Korea and not uh, uh, number 102, South Korea. Oy. Yeah, no, that would be bad. That would be bad. That would be uh, bad. Um, yeah, so... All love to the North Korean people. <laughs> We're not asking for you to explode. <laughs> We're just saying... I think you know. I think you know. I think I think if we're if we're no one's saying that anybody should explode. We're just ranking who would spontaneously explode. Right. Um, and of course, Jupiter's big. Uh, these collisions happen a lot. We miss about half of them because they happen on the other side yeah. of the planet, um, and they they end up being pretty small or pr pretty short. So, so this is just some space junk. Uh, uh, some rock or something colliding into into Jupiter, and and do they just not have? Are they in in a situation where they would get hit with that more? Do they not have the same kind of atmosphere where we, I guess stuff hits here all the time too? We're we're not quite sure exactly. Um, this this impacted on about a week ago from today. Okay, and um, I think we we don't know exactly exactly what that impact is, but I think just the fact that it was caught. Um, is is part of the um, part of what's special here? Yeah, that it was in the sun. Uh, enough people independently verified it. Mm -hmm. That's big, dude. It's That's a pretty, gigantic. It's a pretty big flash. That is compared to like the what I, I assuming these are like storms. The these other large dots on the surface of the planet here. Now, this is where we really would need the people who have any kind of idea of what happens in space because uh, 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 Bryce and I have many strengths. Uh, astronomy, not one, not of, them. one of them. No. Uh, I know knowledge. when something is big, I know that this dot looks big. I know that that's gigantic. That, that, that might even be more than one Bangladesh. That might be multiple Bangladeshes. <laughs> Bangladeshi? What is the plural of Bangladesh? And we're not quite sure at this juncture. Um, here's here's something kind of neat. Uh Take a look at this, Justin. This is from our friends at SpaceX on Twitter. Um, this is a, a, a tweet with a video. A view from Dragon's Cupola. Yeah. Cupola. Uh, and so this cupola. is a little bubble window? This is a view of the... Um, let me see if I get this right here. This is the view... Uh, from the all civilian oh, crew launch. Oh, so that's, that that took off. That's right. The Crew Dragon uh, spacecraft on top of the Falcon Nine uh, took off at eight o two p.m. Uh, local time on uh, the seventeenth. And so this are these are civilians. Yep, they're in space right now. That's right. Uh, Jared Isaacson, the CEO of Shift for Payments. Uh, Cian Proctor, a professor of geoscience, ge geoscience, excuse me. Uh, Haley uh, Arsenault, a physician's assistant, uh, was the medic, Ast uh, aeronautical engineer, USAF officer. Chris Sembroski was there. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they went up and they went back down. They were one of the first civilian crews to go up that did not dock with uh, the ISS, I believe, in a very long time. And so they're just going up. But, and when do they come back down? Do we know when they come back down or do they already come back down? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I uh, no, I think that I think that they came back down already. Yeah, uh, it was it was like the, the 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 Bezos thing. Right. It was more of a space tourism. Yeah. Trip. 
they were going up to to see what they could see. So wait a minute, did they have a bigger, a bigger, a bigger arc? Um, I'm using that euphemistically than than Bezos. Like like who had who who Kienes Mas Macho because uh, 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 you know Branson went up first, got a lot of attention. Bezos went up next, but went up further. So. Uh, um, th- that's a good question. I'm not. Although people are saying that they went up for four days, so that's way longer than Bezos or or Branson went. Oh wow, okay, that is longer. I know that this is orbited this... for three days. Man, wow. you better because they all met each other recently. Uh, you better like these mm-hmm. people, <laughs> right? For you four better, days, if you're for three days doing anything, and I get it, like your mm-hmm. adrenaline is so high, you bet. I bet you they all feel like family. That like, oh, this is great. You just need one person to fart at the wrong time. Like, and next thing you know, like, it is just not going to be good. And everyone's gossiping, but they're in a small quarters and everybody can hear each other. It's, it's, it, it could go bad real fast. But at least they were in that, that, that bomb SpaceX, uh, uh, you know, 2001. Oh, setting, right. The, right? Fa- the fancy capsule where, yeah. where it looks like a, a high end luxury, a luxury liner. <laughs> um, this was, I, I think part of the reason that this is not being compared in the space uh, uh, hog co- comparison contest right now uh, is that this was like a charity uh, uh, event. This sure, race, hun- yeah. Andrew and, I, Andrew and I talked a bunch about it, and we, and we were not particularly in love with the the maximization of <laughs> such a thing. <laughs> I think that there were some very weird caveats that were put in there, but. At the end of the day, the man delivered the goods. He wanted to put a bunch of people into space, and he wanted to raise money doing it, and and gosh darn it, he did. They were up there for, what, three-plus days before they came down, which is amazing. I mean, quite possibly that is right now. And look, records are falling really fast when it comes to space, but, like, they're the coolest people who ever lived? Mm-hmm. Is that the – that's the coolest thing that's happened, like, relative to, like – uh, uh, expertise and effort to coolness certainly in a long time right i mean it's it's because even then even neil armstrong and the people that went to the moon do you know how long they had to go through like they had to be pilots and do space testing and then live in like i saw first man it's basically a horror movie they're all living in the same neighborhood and their friends are dying right like these guys are like i'd like to sign up for a contest boom uh, uh, four months later you're in space for three days I would do it though. I think I would do that. If I uh, a a just three day, four day trip to space, come back, I would do it. I mean, that would crush on the Tinder bio, right? <laughs> it would be killer. It would be <laughs> you think you think you'd get some swipes when you're like, oh, just got back from four days in space, and then do like star moon emoji or whatever. <laughs> the the new space man. Yeah, would be, would be my will be my bio. Um, uh, we are we are getting. Uh, loaded up here, one Andrew Main. Andrew, we'll, we'll, we could take a pause here and get you get you loaded in. How's it going, man? Fantastic. Oh, there we Funny. go. Hey, there he is. Uh, we were just talking about the um, uh, the inspiration, the inspiration. Uh, Yay, launching. inspiration! Flashdown. What did what did you think about it? Uh, I mean, it's pretty awesome that like we're at the point in time where we can just like send like four tourists up into space. They can do a few loopy loops, you know, and come back down. Yeah. Um, so this is what I was positing before you got on, Andrew. Relative to effort and expertise, is this the coolest thing that's ever happened to anyone? So like like understanding that that astronauts have to work a very long time. They have to dedicate a a, a gigantic if not majority chunk of their life to do it. Even the entrepreneurs that have put themselves up in, 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 into space have dedicated their lives to these companies so they can eventually have the wealth to do it. These guys were kind of relative, you know, dudes and ladies. Coolest thing to ever happen relative to the price paid. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, and also, like, here's the thing, too, is, like, Boeing Starliner still hasn't completed a successful mission. Yes. And they're effing tourists flying around the earth on star on a uh, crew dragon. Yeah. Like Boeing, Boeing had to shove their thing back into the factory because oh, our thrusters aren't working. And there was like new space versus old space. 
Uh, I think when somebody's able to, you know, buy, you know, pay for a, you know, an Uber into space with, you know, SpaceX's craft, that kind of sort of solves the issue of like that that argument set. I think I think yeah. yeah, when you're doing it's a small world uh uh through through space uh with your with your technology. I think that you've I mean, proven that it's pretty safe. We've we've done two astronaut missions. Uh now we've there's a Netflix series about, you know, crew dra- you know this mission. I mean like it's kind of So wait, did point, did like, that come out or is that being shot throughout all this? No, they were airing episodes leading airing. up to the Oh, launch. okay, to yeah, hype yeah. up for it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm like, like space tourism. I'm like, I'm cool with, um, that's not the most exciting thing for me about space. It's about the research and all the possibilities that come from there. And, and I do think that the more people try to focus on, uh, space tourism as an industry, it's really missing out the bigger opportunity, the bigger, greater good, but I'm not against it. Not at all. No, I think, I think space tourism is very, very exciting. If you look at it from the perspective of, this is what happens when there's a thriving industry, right? Like, like if you already yeah. have the, if you already have the rockets and you already have the technology and you already have the companies, then yeah, uh, uh, cats can have a little tourism as a treat, right? <laughs> like this just, it just happens. Like it, it, it is, it is another thing that shows that things are thriving. Yeah, I, somebody in the chat said, "Poor boy, and it's sad when the underdog loses." They're not the underdog. They were not <laughs> no, the underdog. No, I think he's kidding. He's kidding. Yeah. that's that. That is that is a joke. That yeah. is a joke. I know. I'm just saying. That's what I get that out there. It's like yes. it's so so incredibly crazy how stacked against. Uh, I don't. Know. I mean, it is it is insane. It, like it, it's they like, feel like, but it was, they feel like the underdog now. They do though. That's well, the irony. But it's like you you're know, now kind of like, yeah, I do feel bad for Boeing. It, it's kind of like watching, you know, companies like you know, uh, 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 like you know, Microsoft. Like Microsoft, at some point about five, six years ago, if not in the balance sheets and the reality of knowing how much people make, like uh, how much Microsoft makes became this idea of like oh scrappy microsoft new leadership for microsoft like like look at them battling into these industries and it's like number one they're gonna be fine they're microsoft they make very popular products that are still used the world around but you're right it's crazy to see that these things that used to be you know the 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 gold standard like the 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 number one the unquestioned dominant lead dogs and now uh you know time comes for us all yeah, like they are. That's the irony. Like they're the underdog now. Like we want. Like they've got incredibly talented engineers there. Incredibly talented people there. It just seems like there's a Boeing, and it just seems like it's same. Same with Blue Origin. Like there is incredibly skillful people there. That if things were different, you know, we'd be able to. We'd be have more things to root for. Well, hopefully we continue to, and I I, I do want to uh, uh, again salute to everybody uh, who put together that that, that inspiration thing. Uh, certainly, just an amazing achievement, and 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 the fact that it was just up there for four days or three three days and change, whatever, is insane. That is again in my in my opinion, they have they've got the the championship belt of coolest things that have happened to people that have put relatively not as much into it. Yeah, I'd say the hard part is like uh, from a mission point of view is is that, you know, they were doing like blood draws and some other stuff in there, but there wasn't like any like super exciting kind of space research they're doing. Yeah. So that was part of like, like, OK, we're, we're up here. We're up here. Cool. I, we're, look, we I'm not, look, we look where we are. They're in space stories. They should have been the research should have been margaritas. Like, like the, the, yeah. the, the research should have been like, uh, uh, let's let's play uh, weightless seven minutes in heaven. They can do whatever the hell they want. Like they're tourists. <laughs> yeah, God, there would be weird, creepy meeting. You know, imagine you know somebody with uh, a less nice version of Jared Isaacman. You know, hey guys. Uh, you know it's gonna go on up there, right? You know we're really gonna <laughs> this do, is right? Like, this is like the 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 super extreme version of uh, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia is the implication of oh. going on a date on a boat. <laughs> oh, <geez. Yeah. laughs> oh man, well, I uh, uh, I got uh, one more topic here. I got one more topic here. Cool, um, Andrew. You already know what this is, so so we'll kind of be on the outside on this, Justin. Yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, a, a little product called Astrocrete? 
Uh, Astro what? Astro Crete. Astro Crete. Astro Crete. 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 Uh, no, I don't. And and uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, mm. I am I am both frightened and excited to find out what it is. What do you think it might be? Oh boy, <laughs> Astro Crete. Astro Crete. Oh jeez. <laughs> Uh, boy, it's either some version of uh, 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 some some gamma irradiated creatine, <laughs> or it is uh, 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 very expensive pre workout powder. Exactly, <laughs> or or some kind of uh, um, I don't know a, a concrete that could that could work in space. Oh, now that would be valuable. Would, wouldn't that be very valuable, Andrew? Having some concrete in space. But at what cost, Bryce? But but exactly right. You can't. You need to, what send water up and the powder, and it might as well send I'm, a brick at that point. I'm biased because working with a technology organization and trying to be mindful of what we talk about and how we present things, yep. so people have the you know full data to work on stuff. Hmm. When I read this headline, I'm like. Did, I don't need to get past this headline. I'd be like, nope. If I was at this research institute or college and I was in charge of this, I'd be like, nope, nope, nope. We are not releasing this because this is, this is, this is a whole bunch of nope. This is just a horror story waiting to happen. Stop it now. So, okay. uh, Astro, so you're right. It, it it would be very valuable for our interstellar. Well, I guess our our solar system and doing that it would be very valuable space for, stuff for our it'd space, be very good for space our stuff. space people need to build space homes uh justin and yeah concrete would be very valuable but uh one way to to kind of make it more possible to make concrete in space would be to change the fluid that you needed to make such a product oh my god i i wow all the fluids I don't know, Bryce. I don't know if I even want to know. I don't even know if I want to know. This is the a... fluids that are readily available when you're up in space and you've got biological organisms. I don't know if any of them make me excited. This is some reporting from George Dvorsky on Gizmodo. Martian colonists could use their own blood to produce concrete. Oh! New research suggests. I was going to say it's either urine or blood, and I didn't know which one would be grosser. And they did in fine and they did in in fact, find that adding urine and uh, saliva, I believe, helped make an even stronger Turns material. Turns out it was all of them. Turns out it was all of them. Wow, that's so. I guess the idea is getting water to, uh, getting water to Mars is, is very difficult. hard, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and so you need something that would make concrete. And so let's use the fluids that regenerate within our own ecosystem. We could draw blood. And pour it into the cement mixture and build our build our new empire. Uh, this uses uh, HSA human serum albumin, um, which is a protein found in blood plasma, um, to to create this uh, this 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 structure. I believe uh, the test that they found uh, was that using um, the blood based binder. In a quote concrete like substance with comprehensive strengths, excuse me, compressive strengths reaching 25 megapascals, which is uh, comparable to concrete, they found that by adding urine, sweat, and tears, uh, brought the strength up 300 percent to 40 uh, megapascals, considerably stronger. Was this All was right. this study published by Doctor Acula? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doctor Acula goes to this... Mars. When you read a study like this, you have to, when I read something like this, I'm like, okay, what's really going on here? I'm like, okay, some researcher somewhere noticed that there was some capability within blood and biological materials that could be used for manufacturing stuff or whatever yeah. like this, okay? But when you read the article, they're like, well, they say, the estimates say that to send one brick to Mars could cost upwards of $2 million. Uh, nope, nope, and nope. That's the whole point of SpaceX's Starship and the only viable way that we seem to have on the horizon to get to Mars. It ain't going to cost no $2 million per, you know, yeah. two-pound brick. Um, if it does, we will never go there. Two, it's like the Matrix using humans as batteries thing. Like, like I remember in the Matrix, like, ah, why do we do this? Why do we build this super complex artificial VR simulation system? Ah, because your batteries... Why not use like cattle? Ah, 
because your batteries, you know. For and, the record, I, I just want to point out that Andrew has had this take since walking out of the theater in 1999. <laughs> like, this, <laughs> this was immediate that Andrew has been complaining about the the, the, the I was the thinking there were going to be, it was so, everything about the movie was so clever. And then you get to that, like, like the raw nutrients you're feeding these people, you can use the electrolytes, you can build a battery to do that. Like, why are you... This is the amount of energy you're taking building. It's not, it's inefficient. This is not, this is not gonna work. And so when I read this, it's like, okay. So uh, where are the nutrients and stuff gonna come to replace that blood? Or are we just, is this sort of like, oh no, we're just, we're just draining colonists to build this thing. Like, because like, that's mm. like, you're like, wait, like why not just instead of whatever food supplies, materials need to give people, you know, to keep them alive that you could draw their blood from, just send that instead. And you look at like, ah, oh, six colonists, ready for this? Six colonists could produce, uh, 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 to get the the crew would have to donate their blood twice a week, which is perfect thing to do with people in space is to yeah. lower the red blood cell count. A uh, two year mission following six would allow for the production of 1,100 pounds of this astro crude. Okay. Let's do the math on yeah. how much it costs, how much materials and food supplies you need to send a person to Mars. Um, it's going to be in the tons. It's several tons. Yeah. You know? Mm. So just send the effing bricks, guys. Send the effing I did the math. I did yeah. the math for you. Instead <laughs> of, like, sanguigating your tour, your uh, your space colonists, mm. um, now this is horrific now counterpoint it is counterpoint it does seem like a cool sci-fi thing to do to build an uh, a, a colony on another planet and uh, every two weeks you got to show up for your for your offering okay no but you know that's offering. how it starts that, that's it that's in the first offering. five minutes before the 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 the, the trailer or before, but before the title I'd and then like, and then we're like this is how you get slaves uh, this is how no, you get slaves no, this is how I'd you get like, slaves no I'd be like, man, we must be in a simulation because this is the dumbest version of reality possible. <laughs> We're able to send us, you know, 100 million miles to Mars, and we have all this cargo passing, so you're draining our blood for us when you could have just, I don't know, sent the bricks. Someone's going to get arrested for shakes. Someone's going to get arrested for jaywalking, despite the fact that there's no roads on Mars, and they're going to be like, well, looks like you have to do double duty on the blood drawing. Sorry, you're in jail <laughs> yeah. now. I think that's fine. I think that's a. Oh, there's a, a very important thing. Read the part about knives. Oh, oh my god. Oh, uh, yeah. So they scientists had also attempted to see if it was possible to make a a, a knife or a blade out of frozen um, feces, and they found. Who are these people? It was not particularly. This effective. is the same group with Astrocrete. Yeah. They're also. Are they what? Frankie Deaky stuff is in is going on in this lab. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make glue from snot. Oh, we already did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> How about my earwax contact lenses? <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh well. Well, now that I've knocked out this concrete from blood thing, I want to make a dookie katana. Yeah, look at all my toenail clippings. Can you guess what I'm doing? <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make Visine out of toenail clippings next. Yeah. You know, you have to try, try. Hair underwear. <laughs> you have to try. You gotta try. That's how. Do you? <laughs> Do you? No, With that, it feels like there's a lot of there's a lot of real estate for try, Bryce. There's a lot of real estate for try. We're, we're going to a very specific part of town when we're uh, putting uh, uh, urine and tears and blood to make a uh, uh, concrete, and then and then using a uh, uh, poop swords on each other. <laughs> oh, man. it's like a closed room murder mystery you know like oh, he got all we found is this pile of crap in the corner exactly. how did this happen <laughs> i don't know wait is that a ribbon from a katana <laughs> all righty uh let's see i think that does it I look, would that be so they could not take knives it's like the average knife to mars would take four billion dollars it's like i don't know maybe we should be going to space i, you know, I never thought i'd say <laughs> and that's that, why i I'm need to cut i need to cut my liver pate with my own poop yeah <laughs> i don't know why i was walter cronkite walter Cron but that's what i, I do <laughs> i don't i i watch sometimes movies where like you know the 
you know, Michael Myers, the villain or whatever is chasing somebody down and like, ah, and I'm like, I don't know if I have that strong of a will to live. And like, ah, uh, you know, we've crashed into the Andes and whatever. Andrew, what are you doing to the flare gun in your face? You yeah. know, like, <laughs> I'm like, I just don't have that much of a will to live. I just, you know, I like life. I enjoy it, but I like comfort and, you know, <laughs> Just saying, you know, like, oh, we're going to have to use our blood and do this. This Andrew just walked out the airlock. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. It was a hypothetical. You know? <laughs> I was going to say, it would be very weird if they struck, it sprung that on you halfway through. Yeah, Although I guess like, if you oh, all had to like pile into the M&Ms. space arc to abandon <laughs> Earth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, on that cheery note, anybody uh, got any picks? Yeah. Do we, do we have any picks? Um Oh, by the way, patreon.com slash weird things. Oh, yeah. Patreon.com slash weird things. Patreon.com slash weird things. Who's got picks? I have a pick. I just got to remember the pick. Um, okay. It was a YouTube thing. I got a pick. Justin's got a pick. Uh, gave a show a shot uh, that I'd been wanting to watch for a little while. Uh, I am a fan of professional wrestling. And so there is a brand new show on stars by the name of Heels. It is set in the small Georgia town of Duffy where there is a family-run independent wrestling outfit. Uh, the, the two brothers, the uh, main one is uh, played by Stephen Amell, formerly of Arrow, and uh, his brother I have not uh, uh, seen before, but it, it's, uh, it's interesting. It, that is a world for which I think has been very, very, very ripe to do a good prestige drama uh, and and so far, uh, so good. I would be curious to see um, how people who are not into wrestling, there's a lot of effort put in, a lot of exposition put in to explain wrestling terms and philosophy. There was like a, a, a Hogwartsian effort <laughs> to explain how and why this universe is what it is. But... Uh, uh, yeah, so far so good. I am I am enjoying it. Uh, I'm only two episodes in. Can you actually go back to that IMDb page? Yeah, to that cast. Yeah, it, it, did I see that James Harrison? Is that James? Yeah, James Harrison. Holy crap, he's an ex football, you know, an old Steeler player. And I'm, I was watching it last night. And I'm like, that dude looks a lot like James Harrison, but he's a pretty good actor. Oh, there you go. Very cool. That's uh, heels. Yeah, heels uh, on, on stars. On stars, you paying we, for stars? Uh, it turns out I was already paying for it, Bryce. Oops. I I I had it on Sling, and so uh, <laughs> so I was able to get the on-demand through Sling. Yeah, it's funny because like Josh and I had talked for years about the idea of like sh- a show set in the wrestling universe because yeah. it's so so rich, so interesting. So I'm glad to see, and I'm glad to see this is good. Yeah, so far so far so good, and also it was uh, the long suffering uh developmental development hell project of Michael Waldron who did Loki and uh came out of the Rick and Morty writing room and is uh, oh, right. took over for Doctor Strange and is working with Kevin Feige on his on his Star Wars movie so this was wow. this, this was very much something that that he was a a huge fan of but wound up like Loki being kind of removed from the day to day uh, uh, operations of it because the rest of his career took off so fast. Cool. Curious to see what's going to happen to all those new Star Wars movies. You know, Ryan Johnson's new movie, all of that, and <laughs> everything else. Well, I, I, I feel like the, the the Feige one probably has the best the best uh, 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 shot of coming out, right? Yeah, I, I don't. You know, I feel like if, if if Feige wants it to be released, if anybody has has the, the the stroke at Disney, it's Kevin Feige, right? Yeah. the The only thing, the only in, Investor Day twenty twenty, they said Patty Jenkins was going to be doing Rogue Squadron, which. Oh um, right. But that's twenty twenty three. I don't even know if that's. I don't. I yeah. yeah. We'll see. That'll be. That'll have been five years. Or how many years since? Um, the third, the third movie. The before, if that comes out in two thousand, it'll be since, four years since that one. Yeah, since, <laughs> since the movie that was so good, we all remember the name of it. <laughs> the last rise, the of last time that we all Jedi went Walker. to the movies and cool. said Star Wars, hooray! <laughs> hey, 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 Star Wars. Um, yeah. I got a pick. Yep. Uh, I was uh, traveling uh, last week. I was gone last week, and um, 
uh, I had a I had, I had a long travel day ahead of me and 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 took it upon myself to to finally marathon um, a series of movies that had um, uh, been been on my radar. I ended up uh, watching the uh, Evangelion um, film, the the new film series that uh-huh. they did. Um, so Evangelion one one point all the way up to what is it three point oh. I plus never knew how one. it was pronounced until now. Yeah, um, these these are uh, they're in these are interesting. Um, uh, I I enjoy the original uh, series. I I kind of liked the the sort of. Uh, can you can you give us the 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 the, the short 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 yeah. version of of why it's so beloved and why it has become back on on the front of people's minds sure. recently? Uh, so the short pitch on Evangelion is, um, it's like a lot of other animes where a teenage boy has to get into a robot and save the world. Yep. Um, except this one kind of um, positions it as. What if it was real? And what if it hurt a lot to do this? What if what if you were a teenage boy who uh, uh, had, had it, it was no small cost for you to have to save the world, especially when all the adults around you um, were not being very good adults. Yeah. Um, and so it it deals a lot with a lot of um, psychological and mental mental issues um, since the original show in the '90s, and so it's kind of come back because. Gotcha. Because so a lot of childhood trauma, but also anime, but also robots. Exactly. Now exactly. the class of people that I know <laughs> that are very excited about it becomes very clear. <laughs> Thank you for explaining this in a very clear way. Uh, but the, the move, so they're they've been for the past you know uh, almost two decades now have been retelling that story in these feature films. Okay. Uh, because the original series just came out in one year and it was really rushed. Um, and so with this final film, 3.0 plus 1.01, whatever, um, it finally kind of finishes this, this story. And if, 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 uh, if I have this wrong, correct me, but, uh, this was also one of those projects where a lot of pressure came upon the creator and, and they, mm-hmm. we wound up making these sequels that were just very out there, uh, in, in, partly maybe even as a response to the fact that there was so much pressure on him. Um, yeah, partly because I, I think the ending of the ending of the story they tell in these films is wildly different from the ending that they told in another film years ago when they tried to change the ending again, which was already different from the ending that they originally told. So, so. This, this is, this is the latest and this is the same creator that's done it. Nobody's like taking right. it out of state. So now he has done another ending to the story. And uh, would you say it is more or less satisfying? Um, I would, I would say for most people, it's probably more satisfying. Okay. Yeah. So good. So uh, yeah. Good, I, it's I, a good change. It's a good, it's good. You know, good I think watch, watching these four films, um, you know, ends up being about as much as watching the original series in terms of time investment. Um, but it's, I think they're, they're cool and they try, they do some further bigger things with the story. So, yeah. uh, and they're all on Amazon, um, prime video right now. Uh, so uh, you can check them all out there. The Evangelion uh, rebuild films, including uh, voice talent by our boy. Yeah, he's on great he, night, Brett. He's uh, a significant character in that fourth film. Look so, at that. Yeah, if you like our friend Brett, Andrew you Evangelion, pick- yeah. not Evangelion as I thought. <laughs> no, so, no, no, no. she was on Lost. She was on Lost. That's <laughs> no, no. I have two two picks. Go. Um, because uh, one is just I've been rewatching the Bond films, and it was funny. I got to You Only Live Twice, where uh, Sean Connery proves that a six foot tall Scotsman can pass as you know Japanese man just impeccably. There's no reason <laughs> to question that. Yeah. Um. Ob- obviously, you have to get past sort of a <laughs> a lot of the the misogyny, which you know, um, obviously, which is there, but movies are still highly entertaining. There was a scene in You Only Live Twice where he uh, Bond fights. This big, uh, like, hitman guy, this big, huge dude. And, you know, I'm watching, I'm like, man, that guy looks more Samoan than Japanese. But, you know, there's Japanese culture is very big, whatever. And then they get to, I watch the behind the scenes and they talk about, we brought in, you know, wrestler Peter Mavia. Peter Mavia. Yep. And Mavia, as they said, but uh, Peter Mavia is uh, otherwise known as The Rock's grandfather. Yeah. Whoa! High High Chief Peter Mavia is what he was known in in the ring. But uh, yeah, there he was. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, The Rock's grandfather. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know he was in the Bond movie. 
Yeah, yeah, he was a pretty cool part, you know. So anyhow, that was pretty neat to see that, you know, he was, and they have some behind the scenes footage if you have like the the iTunes extras where you see him, you know, interacting and stuff. So it was pretty cool. It's just a neat little thing like, oh, I never, you know, I love the Bond movies. And I never realized that, never knew that, that, you know, I mean, I knew, you know, I knew because I saw the, the family name and I knew they had the wrestling yeah. history there. And I'm like, I, and I'm looking, I'm like, I wonder if this is. And I'm like, yeah, it was his grandfather. Uh, so my pick is a channel called uh, Mustard, which is a weirdly named channel, but they have a lot of cool different. Uh, he does basically YouTube videos on really crazy vehicles, and the most recent one was a pretty interesting thing about the Antarctic snow cruiser. So okay. imagine you're going to build this big, huge, massive vehicle with ten foot tall tires with an airplane on top to go explore Antarctica. Sign, now, sign imagine, me up. Now imagine that, like, uh, it runs rush on thing. blood. <laughs> if only you rush this thing into production, it only has 70 horsepower per wheel. There are no tracks on the wheels. You never get to pro properly test it, and you take it to Antarctica, and all it does is spin on the ice. Oh my God. <laughs> so they made it all the way there just for it to suck. <laughs> it sucked big. And then, uh, basically, they say it's like, uh, it's somewhere. It, they don't know. They, they don't, don't know where know. it is. They, they lost they, it. They, <laughs> they abandoned it, and they don't know. It became a stationary research station for a while. They're either like, they're like, yeah, it's either buried under ice or it broke off on an ice shelf and is at the bottom of the ocean. Wow. But That's what cool. makes mustard really cool is you're looking at the graphics. They go, they do an incredible job of creating VFX and graphics to show you what these things would have looked like, mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome. There's a lot of great vehicles and things, you know, uh, you know, and things like vertical, you know. Uh, airliners and you know vertical takeoff airliners, rotor dynes, all these other kinds of cool stuff. What happened to the flying boats and you know concours, etc. Just a lot of really just neat, neat stuff. And the, the graphics are just push it over the top because it's so easy to visualize these things. Wow, that's cool. Uh, no, that that's awesome. Great channel. Such a such a rich world of uh, of, of of breaking stuff down. And I think that's another thing where it's like. I couldn't imagine a television show that would dedicate the kind of time and resources that a channel like that would do for something as like specific that would let you just mind meld your brain on on something like like that, like what you just said. That's awesome. Yeah. Very nice. Well, uh, well is that it for picks? Everybody think, got your picks? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. we got our picks in. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for Weird Things Today. It's been weird. <laughs> Perfectly oh, timed. For good folly. <laughs> All righty, everybody. Well, uh, there we go. That's your weird things for the day. Uh, we're going to get ready to do some after things, I believe. Yeah, we get a little after things topic. A little topic, topic around. Yeah, my heart out's at 1 p.m. my time. Okay, so you have 30 cool. minutes. Yeah, and it's okay if I take like a four minute break right now. I'll sure, be right back. Go okay, go for it. Go ahead. <sighs> oh, yeah. Did you uh uh do you do anything uh, fun over the weekend, Bryce? Um, no, I had a I had a I had a very chill weekend. This was nice. a chill weekend for me. You know, we did too. We um, did a lot of home improvement. I, I hung, I like, like yeah. actually hung uh, uh, lights in my backyard. Oh, nice. And I know uh, this is how I separated what I did before, which is basically just run the lights from hooks to like what I did this weekend, which is I looked up a YouTube tutorial and bought a bunch of stuff from Lowe's. <laughs> uh, but there's now there's wire and, and uh, turnbuckles and, and all sorts of things that uh, yeah, will, will and I only made one major strategic screw up. <laughs> <laughs> that was I bought uh, uh, S hooks that hook the uh, the bulbs to my wire. Uh -huh. The first batch of them, uh, way too thick. I barely was able to squeeze them onto the 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 bulbs. And I, I was just simply unable in, in the more awkward way that I was able to do it with my channel locks to, to push them down. Uh -huh. uh, and also, this is going to be a topic on, on Great Night, a little <laughs> preview. But, like, I have I have soft, soft baby 
writer hands. Like, <laughs> I, I have, in fact, they're not even writer hands anymore. I don't even write as much anymore. I, I mm-hmm. literally, I just do nothing but with these, these, these little baby tendrils then, then, then gesticulate. Uh, uh, that is, that is, that is the, the most they do. Cause it was one day of physical labor that involved me squeezing and hanging things. And my hands just ached for, for, you know, 48 hours. They still hurt. So uh, shout out to everybody who listens to this that actually has an actual job that works with their hands. <laughs> Just know that if I did it for one day, my my both my arms would fall off and, and I'd be able to sell them to the Martians for concrete. It's, um, uh, oh, it's, it reminds me of like uh, uh, mowing the lawn as a kid and you'd be done and your hands would just be, Super soft and, yeah. and um, smooth because they had been kind of kind of rattled. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Luke Skywalker it. says I watched the first three episodes of Why the Last Man. Oh yeah. Me too. Didn't make it. Didn't make it onto the picks list. Wonder oh, why. Oh yeah. Maybe it's because it's bad. Really? It's bad. Oh okay, interesting. It's just not good. I only watched the along the lines of fire. I watched the first episode. Um but I've been I've been trying to catch up on so much stuff yeah. uh, that I've been behind. Yeah, yeah. It, it actually is very very clear in watching Why the Last Man that it got sold as Walking Dead meets Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And it's like if you look at it from that perspective and you're excited by that idea, then I think you might like it because there was certainly the social commentary of Handmaid's Tale and the what are we gonna do now? Where's the water tomorrow gonna come from? Plot mechanisms of The Walking Dead, but like Walking Dead, you always gotta find some reason why somebody needs to go to the library <laughs> so the zombies can show up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and why the last man has some similar like plot contrivances uh to, to to do that and also it's like i don't know everything i remember about the comic series uh all takes place once this like new future world has kind of been developed mm. so uh, we're seeing a bunch of stuff that we're seeing a lot of stuff in slow motion yeah. that at a certain point like i just kind of wonder when they're going to flash forward like Three months, four months, six months, something like that. Mm, gotcha. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I generally like the first. I watched that first episode with something that you had mentioned in mind, which was uh, the idea of show, you know, showing off all of this, all of these characters, this entire cast of characters, and not really many of them being very root forable, very likeable, likeable, accessible. Yeah. Like, because uh, uh, you, because usually, uh, when we talk about movies or films or whatever, I usually don't put a lot of value in having characters that I like. I don't necessarily feel like I need to like a character to see them in a prominent role. Yeah. Um. But but watching this that first episode, I was like, ah. You, you want to know what? I, I'll say this. Even though I liked it, Heels kind of has that problem, too, where where yeah. there's a lot of flawed characters. <laughs> there are certainly elements of every character for which I can I can sympathize with. But, like, boy, you really, you do need a North Star at, at a certain point. Or, or your anti-hero needs to be, like, facet. It's got to be, like, Tony Soprano. It's got to be, like, a... a, a you know, a uh, Mad Men, Don Draper. Like, you you have to have, they they just have to be Frankenstein, <laughs> like just stomping through this thing. So it's inherently interesting. Well, inter- interesting. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. You know? you, they have to they have to be kind of out there because otherwise, if it's just like nobody likes a bunch of boring, conflicted people, that's life. <laughs> like we're, <laughs> we're we're watching TV to get away from that. Uh, all right. So we got a time. Did Did you need a break, Justin? No, it's wrong. Okay. Uh, do you want to bring us in, Andrew, for after things? Yep. All right, then I'll catch you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce 
Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen. Yep. Here's the topic for today. Let's talk nonfiction books. What have you read lately? What's been interesting to you? I'll start off. Go ahead. Let you think about your answers. Uh, I'm in the middle of, but I've been listening to Chaos Monkeys. And it's a very interesting book. And it's by a guy that worked at Facebook. He had a startup. And then he uh, spun off, basically spun the start off into basically he went to Facebook. His partners went to Twitter. It's by Antonio Garcia Martinez. And he recently there was an issue where he got hired at Apple and then he quickly got let go at Apple just a few months ago. And, you know, I don't know the complexities of all that. But it's a very interesting on the ground sort of story. What's it like to work at a company like Facebook? And from his point of view, and to understand it is very much his point of view of a guy that worked there and then had a project that go forward and then he left and et cetera. But uh, it's, it's was in the early days, not early days, but I mean like around 2010, 2011 at Facebook. And you just look at how much that organization has grown and changed over time, which was uh, just fascinating, very, very fascinating sort of like, you know, to see what, you know, ah, they weren't really good at ads then, <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they really hadn't figured out targeting and they hadn't figured all this stuff out, which they have now, you know, this was a company that when they had their IPO, it oh, was it like, like 40 billion, or I forget what the IPO was at. And then people are like, well, are they really worth it? Or I mean, what was the Facebook IPO at? And anyhow, very interesting. The book is, uh, from his point of view and, uh, uh, I, I, I was going to ask, this is the one that had a little bit of controversy around it, uh, and it, didn't it cost him his job at Apple? Yes, uh, yeah. apparently. And and so he, he he's, the content is a bit uh, uh, bro-y, and not, always, not in a good mm. way, kind of way, that or sounds, whatever, he's, he's, he's a very... Yeah, that that that, that sounds yeah. like based on the 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 passages that I remember reading as this was becoming a thing on the internet, uh, it very much seems like it was written from a a Silicon Valley tech bro perspective, which, considering the title and theme of the book was "Here's a story from a Silicon Valley <laughs> tech bro perspective," I thought. But he's he's not a tech. I think he's not. He's he's a he's a guy that came from finance and stuff. Okay. So he worked at. He worked at Goldman Sachs, so he sure. was a guy that was like a pro, pro, he was an East Coast guy coming into sort of the tech world, telling you what's going on there. So gotcha. Well, then, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that also comes with its own kind of culture of of uh, uh, more Patrick Bateman esque, perhaps. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah. There was there's an element of heightened masculinity and money <laughs> that uh, that is that is unique to its time and place and profession, uh, but. So so you so you liked it like the 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 whole of the book uh, was worth it. It's an interesting read. I think if you're curious, like I, I think that reading firsthand accounts of people that work at these companies is very fascinating. And so I think if it's a subject you're interested in, I think it's in, you know, what's it? You know, it is a very. I think you understand. It, he demystifies a lot of how the world works. So you hear about like aqua hires and things like that and how yeah. that works. Um, you know, what does it mean when you have a company with like three other engineers and you know, you get, you know, some other company comes on and buys you. What does it really mean when they're really after the talent and stuff? And then it's like, congratulations, now you're an employee, you know, yeah. et cetera. So I would say that like, uh, yeah, he, there's, there's a meanness, you know, there about the, how he kind of refers to sort of people in the Bay Area and stuff, which I imagine if were he writing that book today or whatever, it'd probably be a very, very different sort of approach. But also I think that it's like, it feels, uh, I don't know how to describe. I mean, it, there's a, there's a genre of that kind of like style of writing which I think he was trying to go for. But when you're writing firsthand account about yourself, yeah, it doesn't reflect too flattering on it. But again, um, what a, very interesting. How long ago did it come out? Was that recent or? 2016. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So not too long. We did ago. the revised edition, but I love but I love reading biographies about people firsthand and their experiences yeah you know about what it's like you know for you know what's it like on the ground in these companies because on the outside we hear things on the inside you find out about like you know literally product wars between two different divisions people trying to you know sabot going after each other with more vengeance than their competitors and you know and you get like you also get like quotes like 
Zuckerberg described Twitter as a clown car that drove into a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's you just this, wrong. You know, it's a very, very interesting. So I, 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 I'm not going to ignore the controversial nature of the book and et cetera about that, but I would say it's very interesting. Well, I'm glad, Andrew, that you said nonfiction books because that precludes me from saying uh, the fiction book for which I would suggest everybody read is Mastermind by Andrew Maine, which I've, I, I, was, I was thrilled the other day to get randomly served a targeted ad for on Twitter. Uh, uh, very, very, very exciting uh, uh, to see like that pop up and be like, wait a minute, uh, who? Andrew didn't retweet? Who? Uh, other friend of mine didn't retweet? Literally just Amazon spent money. So I would know what I already knew because I had already mm. purchased it, and that is Mastermind, which is a a team up between uh, the Naturalist and the Jessica Blackwood books, right? Yep, yep. Between Theo Cray and Jessica Blackwood. Uh, so go get that. So we can't say that, but we do encourage you to go buy it. Uh, my pick is, and I had mentioned this uh, the other week, Anarchy, State, and Utopia by Robert Nozick, and this was a recommendation from. A, a very philosophical, philosophically minded friend, uh, Kevin Ryan, who uh, is is digging into it. But it's a political philosophy book and is uh, written in the mid seventies, I believe, and is often credited as the the intellectual and philosophical underpinnings of much of our modern libertarian uh, ideas. But uh, the book, I think, so far, it's dense. Like, and I'll tell you, even for and for an audio book, it's very dense. So I'm not even a quarter of the way <laughs> through it. But uh, uh, especially since for the audio book, it includes all of the footnotes just in the uh, 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 in in the the you know reading of it. Sounds but thrilling. Look, it it's if you're into political philosophy, like, and and for everybody that's. Uh, uh, I, I would normally not tell people to read it, except, except for the fact that politics has now crept into everything, to which I kind of feel like if everybody wants to weigh in on every political decision, then at some point, somebody, it, it, it's, it should be recommended you got to eat your spinach, and that means like understanding some of these ideas. And I will say that for Nozick, Nozick apparently uh, in the foreword, it goes into this, but came out of a very, very, very influential group of political philosophers through the late 60s and 70s that in many ways charted our modern kind of political course and and amongst that group you got had important works about progressivism and uh, uh various different other uh trends that i don't want to i could guess but i don't want to be uh, uh, dumb about it long story short he does not just make a statement on why this is right uh, a lot of where i have gotten so far is fascinating in that like for him to just you know, basically for him to discover the worth of the state, he goes through a thought experiment of how many private clubs or companies would you need to totally replicate what we imagine the role of the state would be. And then with each one of them breaks down what would go wrong and what would go right and, and the pros and cons of each. But if you go think about like, okay, what is the elemental thing and what can be replaced, what can't be replaced, then that is his way of, of, of guiding us toward the point of, well, what do we understand the state to be? And so what uh, eventually he gets to, one of the other most famous parts of the book, is he then, not only as is uh, uh, put in there, anarchy, state, and utopia, then takes it the step further of uh, how do we, like, how do we even conceptualize utopia and how do we understand our political philosophy to either play closer or further away from it so uh heady do not be into it if uh, uh do not read it if you are not like up for this game but uh uh if you are into political philosophy and you want to go ahead and uh and, and dig into it please go ahead anarchy state and utopia by robert nozick mm. can i google the guy and tell me he does not have the most amazing hair you've ever seen on a philosopher i have not seen this I have not. I have not looked at him. Uh, oh wow, though he's he's a looker. Oh, dude! Wow. 
I'll tell you what. Is that George Clooney? That's George, George Clooney George photo Clooney. got inserted there by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Man, I feel like this might this might not have to go into my my my, my Pinterest. I, I feel like I'm I'm getting into I'm getting into Nozick territory pretty quick. I feel like I need to rock this do. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The <laughs> I just saying not not judge the man by his words, not the style of his hair. But I gotta <laughs> not, tell not you that, that that guy's got some style. Yeah. That's a yeah. who's the uh one of the Apple. Uh, VPs, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he definitely, yeah. He he's he's got he's got some Frederigi locks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I've got I I don't I don't read as much um as uh, some of the other folks on the show. Um, uh, I, I think the last book I've read this is more more of like a self help thing, but I figure that this this would probably be. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, um, you know, I don't think it's, it's necessarily perfect. And I think that there are some parts of the book that I look at and go, Oh, that's kind of, um, a signal that this might be used by, by, I don't know, for various motivations, but, but I, I think it's interesting. And I think some of the exercises inside were good because I think that was what I was really looking for. But you think that there's a nefarious purpose to mindfulness or, or, or nefarious people are, are amongst it? Um, I know that some of the things that this can help you with is, is I, I, it's just, it's a, it's a little, so it's a little godly is what I'll say. There's a little spiritual, a, a little godly for, for me in some instances, but, um, but it, but it's helpful in that there are exercises in here, which is the thing I, I needed more. I, I, you know, kept hearing about mindfulness, yeah. try pro mindfulness, do this, do that. But what I needed was, this is the definition of it. And here yeah. are some things that you can do. Um, so for those of you who are just joining us because our stream dropped off and now it's back, Bryce's pick is the Bible, which his <laughs> review is a little godly for me. It's yeah. good. It's a good read. It's just a little godly, just a little, little Jesus for me. Kind of preachy. Yeah. <laughs> a little preachy. Yeah. Um, but but um, I it, so there's just a, there's just every so often there will be like one sentence and then I'll be like, oh okay, yeah, I guess you could do that too. Um, but uh, otherwise, I think this is, it's very helpful and a good um, kind of first step into figuring out uh, mindfulness. Yeah. So. You never know. Yeah, you know, I remember reading a book and it was sort of a pop psychology book was Maxwell Maltz's Psycho Cybernetics, which like came out like the 50s or the 60s. I forget what it was. But there was points in there about like the idea of accepting personal responsibility, like just just like stop blaming things. Then like yeah. your inside, your internal view versus your external view. The idea of understanding that how we see ourselves isn't how other people see us, and there's how we want to see ourselves, and understanding that incongruity there. And it was really helpful. And and uh, you know you never know. You pick something up that I'll be like, eh, and you're like oh yeah, this is this is really cool. Like, mm. um, like I uh, was it Think and Grow Rich, you know, which is a old you know book about you know how to make money but under underneath it all was the whole the the point of the, the moral the secret is willpower yeah the willpower and that really was like yes like what and you read this like if you can't figure it out i'm not going to tell you and then you're like well what is it what is it it's like 
Mm-hmm. No, they all had willpower. These people wouldn't give up. Like, oh. And Napoleon Hill's kind of a, a bit of an interesting figure because I think some of his bio may be a bit elaborated. Mm-hmm. But the ah. core point, though, of like, yeah, no, willpower really, it is a thing. It is a thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, w- without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, that's the, the number one thing that I have, have thought more and more about and come back to uh, as I've gotten older is the understanding of the, the, the combination of like internal energy. How much am I wasting on tearing myself down? How much am I spending on the effort that I have at hand? How much uh, uh, content am I completing? Like, and, and I don't look, I mean, obviously we are in the business of creating independent content, but like that can be anything. Just getting to the end of a cycle like where and the efficiency therein and how much it takes your mind versus uh you know your 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 talent and skill uh and and preserving that that's that's the name of the game man and and uh, uh I feel like there's different ways that people can understand that and conceptualize it but there's there's no one way to eat a Reese's <laughs> right uh gentlemen yep um, I think we could, the books that we recommended could serve as our picks, if you like. Absolutely. I think they are. Yeah, I think that those, are, those are some good, meaty books. Then, it's been after. <laughs> All right. I got a bolt. All right. All right. See you, mate. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, everyone who hung out with us here for some weird things and some after things. We will be back in a couple hours with Cord Killers. Yeah. It'll be Tom and Brian and myself. Uh, Justin, Justin R. Young here on Twitch, yep. on Twitter, also yep. good stuff. Yep, doing right. great stuff. Uh, tomorrow, great night. Uh, I don't think we have a guest tomorrow. I don't think so, but then but, I, but I think the week after that, we'll have some guests. I do think we might have a guest after that. All right, well, uh, everybody, thank you. We will see you later on in the Monday. Otherwise, have a good rest of your Monday. Bye. See you.